All right, welcome to part two. We've got our block. Everything's looking good. Uh, we had some little, bit, you know, some lessons learned on feeds and speeds. One thing I goofed on, and that's this little cavity, little recess pocket here and here, and I can't figure out what it is. It doesn't show up in the simulation, so I'm thinking it could have been tool pull out, but tool pull out would expose itself through other problems like the height here before it was 3D machined, or I was actually looking to see if we had tool pull out right here, and we don't. So um, I don't know. You know, luckily it's not going to affect the use and function of the part, but you know, darn it, that's not something to be proud of at all. So we're going to use that ball end mill. I stuck it out further to interpolate the 10 degree or so taper in here, and then we're going to engrave it, and then we'll flip her. Super happy. Take a look, folks. Focus. Nice, crisp engraving. That's a new Lakeshore tool. Again, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm using another brand new tool. Carl actually dropped these off from at our open house. They really look different looking uh, geometry, um, but looks great. Did raise a small burr. I'll work on that. Um, it'll actually come off pretty easy. And then look at the finish on the uh, taper. That is just awesome. Super happy with that. We've got a nice smooth flat face here. We're going to rest that on our jaw. And then we'll check that with an indicator and make sure we're good. Somewhat Someone had asked or been concerned about this, but plenty of holding power here. And then we've got this reamed hole here that we can use to uh, set, as you can see here in Fusion 360, as our XYZ zero. Um, let's see how straight she is. I tell you, having four cameras is, is fun and awesome, but uh, makes it sometimes different to maneuver around the mill.
Okay, so we're not straight. Let's try that again. See how far. That's eight thou out of alignment across a five or six inch part, actually closer to eight inch part there. That's, uh, well, say that's plenty good. Let's just do it once more and see, see if there's a chip in there. If that's as good as we get it, I'm not gonna be upset, but, but I am curious to see. That face is pretty clean. I don't see any major suspects on the, on the vise. Now, we may have had the part in the hair crooked uh, in this, in the parallels, there's a chance. So it could be the, the case that uh, we're getting an eight thou run out, but that actually will keep these two faces parallel. Um, so again, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Yeah, about the same thing here. Oh, actually, a little worse. It's tempting to just cut and edit this out and show you guys the perfectly dialed in part, but. This is the real life of what it's like to be a machinist. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, we zero that. So I go to zero on my Heimer here. And jog across this. We're getting five run, that run out toward, uh, from end to end, plenty good. Actually, while we're doing that, set our Z. Okay, so jog down into our hole. Approximately centered in the Y or front to back, but not actually all that important because we're gonna do this, this one again. So find the left edge, hit the zero, and then come over, find the right edge. and hit divide by two. And then now we should be pretty close to the center in X right here. So you should be pretty darn spot on when we center up in the Y here. So, overshot that a hair. Um, zero. divide by two. And now what we do is we come back and redo our X because we weren't perfectly centered in Y when we did our X last time. Now check this out. This should also tell us if um, what our hole diameter is because these things are pretty darn accurate. So zero there. According to that, we're a little bit over. Um, we'll check that later. I'm not sure that's totally, I'm not convinced that that's right. Making a great chip, that's why. Uh, really, I don't use a lot of half-inch tooling. I wanted the extended reach, but really, I should have thought about that first operation, doing it with this five flute rather than that big half-inch. Such an expensive tool, and really, this machine just does great with quarter-inch and three-eighths-inch.
we need to clean up this inside face right here and then the other side as well. I didn't catch this in cam. You know, the material's gone from the roughing end mill, but I want it to look nice. So we've got a three quarter inch solid carbide end mill, the same one we're gonna use here in a second to clean up the OD. Let's rock and roll. I really, really go slow with this. Um, not on the plunge so much, but when we're cutting, we're only spinning at 500 RPM. RPMs, in fact, we may even bump that down a little. Um, and about one, one and a half inches a minute. And see that? It sounds great. We're still taking a chip, but that's in my experience how we can cut with this long end mill with a deep axial cut, thin radial, and not get vibration, not get chatter, and get a good finish. So how do we fixture this to cut the profile? We drilled and tapped this for some half 13 fasteners. We've got a standard clamp kit bolt in here. Drop our part onto here. And that shelf underneath here, we know from the CAD model, should be 1 8 of an inch thick. So we grabbed our set of height gauges. And I've got a 1 8 inch height gauge. So I can set that right here sort of right under this material, but close to where I'm gonna be clamping. And we're pretty kind of pretty light cut, so I'm not too worried about any flex in the middle. And then um, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of shin stock. I wanna to try to keep the uh, tops here nice and neat. Uh, let's see here. Trying to just avoid any tool marks from or clamp marks when we strap down here. So lay our strap clamp on top. That one's close, but still plenty of room. Okay, just. Not even snug. Okay, so we move it around. Take a one, two, three block, push it up against the movable jaw here, and then I just grabbed a height gauge that was about the right length to cover this gap. And it's actually, for a second ago, it was ringing on me, but uh, if we push that up against here. So we need a little bit of flex, and here we go.
Okay, I like that. There we go, that's what I was saying. It's ringing against the uh, side, which is kind of funny. Let's tighten that down. Sorry, I just got a phone call and I forget where we left off, but I tighten these down. I'll check them again. Okay. Um, let me think about this. I just One thing that I just realized is I don't have my seam zero point. Hmm. <laughs> Machining is really easy until you have to fix your shit. Um, okay, I think I got it figured out. We put another 125 height gauge under the right side, and what that let us do is clamp down here pretty snug, and we used our gauge block to align this thing up on the 123 block. Now the problem is I can't get my Heimer in here to sweep this face because, you know, we've got a finished surface here a little, and we've got a rough surface here, and uh, the Heimer tips only so long. So my idea is... I can hold in. Don't tell Jared I'm using one of his clamps. Okay, so that's pretty darn square up to the face that we're trying to check and sweep. Now, I don't have a problem. Checking. how square we are, which we're not, okay, but that's okay. Now I can fix that. So we are too, um, a little bit out there, so I'll just tap it back, basically tram this part in. Sun down this one a little bit more, maybe. Okay. Getting there. Okay, that's... Oops. That's good. Sweet. Now, I can actually go ahead and dial this hole in, and then we can put our clamp back in. But not just yet, because I got a visitor. Can you say hi, William? Can you say hi to everyone on YouTube? Can I have a hug? William, where are you? Are we at Daddy's shop? Hey, w hey, William. High five. No. No. It's so hot. I zeroed on my X and Y uh, on the center of the hole, and now we will put our pin in, clamp down. I try to be smooth. I'm not sure how much this matters, but I try to be smooth because when you are when you fasten a bolt down, you are putting some radial twist into the part, and it can move it. Um, so hopefully, um, hopefully we stayed true. Let's put a block back on it and just check. Okay. 
Yep, our block is flat against there. Perfect. That is not much. That's about a thou or so run out across three inches. Let's rock and roll. That side looks pretty good if you ask me. Not a bad finish. So wrapping up the first pass, there is a one more cleanup pass here of only five foul. And I did that because I thought if we had some variations here, it's gonna cause uneven deflection. So um, you know, having just watched it run, I'm not sure it was necessary, but for the extra split second, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So we screwed something up. Um, actually, so this is the next day. You saw my wife and William came by, and I gotta say, having a, a he's two now. We got one more on the way due in August. He it is so awesome when he when he goes. I won't go to daddy's shop. It's pretty cool. So, anyways, I noticed something and it bothered me. A um, couple things. We have a little lip here, and I was like, man, I I knew in cam I drove the finishing tool d deep enough. And then we have a lip on the ID of the reamed hole. And what else did I notice? I think, oh, and then our dimension was a little bit too thick here. And I was like, wait a minute here. That's, I mean, we all make mistakes, but that's just too many, it's too weird. And then I realized, and I haven't watched all the footage yet, which I think will probably tell me what I did. But when we flipped it, I think I set the wrong uh, Z height, which is, like super embarrassing. I, I, who, who does that? Um, oops. Uh, luckily, it's one that's pretty easy to fix. So we're going to throw this back in the machine and we're just going to lower this face. Uh, I think it's like 43 thou or something. And that will, should pick, fix most of these things. We will re-cut um, this bevel here because in theory it's a little bit lower. And the other thing I'll mention is you see where I got some black Sharpie? A little tiny poked up tits and that's from 
the adaptive strategy. Adaptive strategies in Fusion 360 are awesome. They're, they're really awesome, but they're not finishing strategies. So when we did it on the floor here, it's really smooth, but every once in a while it'll it'll leave a little bit. So we're gonna switch to a horizontal and we'll use a half inch tool here, um, mostly because I think it'll look a little bit better. It's funny, that finish is actually pretty darn smooth, but it doesn't look as good as a bigger toolpath finish. So I think with those few things, we'll be good to go. I was tempted to just do this off camera, but everyone's comment in Rough and Ream part two, uh, I really appreciate it. Like it's nice to see that, uh, uh, how many people still enjoy seeing the fact that um, not everything works on the first try. I'm, a, I'm really embarrassed about this because I don't make mistakes like that a lot. So anyways, I'll stop yabbering. Let's machine this thing, finish up and get it packaged off to Adam. Last but not least, we gotta drill that side hole. Using a 3 8 inch spot mill. Uh, hopefully this is stiff enough. We'll take a look here. Yep, I think that was okay. And it's a quarter inch through hole. So this will be the big question is making sure this doesn't walk. It is, it is walking. Hmm, let me think about that. I know what we're gonna do. We keep a toolbox full of our chipped and broken end mills for this exact reason. I am going to, by hand with Pathpilot here, um, just peck down. Now, you saw we walked off a little, so that hole's not gonna be Perfect. I think it's for a roll pin of some kind. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Again, but that's not, I don't mean to uh, act casual about being a crummy machinist, but, um, well, note it. Lesson learned there. You could have drilled that hole when the stock was still square. You'd have to think about your locating the, uh, locating the hole, but Obviously, you don't have to deal with the, uh, okay, we're, so we're through there. And honestly, at this point, I'm not even gonna load my code back up. I'm just gonna. Just page up and page down and path pilot is manual peck, manual CNC peck drilling.
We're through. Now, John, as Tom Lipton would say, you bozo the part uh, at the very end. What do I do now about that? Hmm. Well, I, I, coincidentally, I got to run, so I'm going to think about that. I'll be back. I should have just peck plunged it to start with a quarter inch end mill and that would have given me a proper guide hole to drill through it. And so, look, it's not the end of the world uh, in terms of the functionality part, but you know, what a silly thing to do. So how do we fix this, make it look a little bit better than that is we're gonna take this 3 8 inch uh, end mill here and we'll go it real slow, you know, 800 RPMs, oops, 800 or so forward and we can, that's the thing I like about Pathpilot is we can just change this to like 2% jog and then we'll just jog down here. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is just make it look like a pocket, um, make it look like it was a design feature instead of a mistake. I'm okay with that. Um, it's not too deep. Uh, this is just a retaining pin again. I'm not defending my mistake, but we shouldn't affect the functionality, but that looks less like a goof. So the last thing, which can be the most important thing, is, fix my gimbal here, is packaging. So obviously we don't want this thing to get damaged when we ship it, so some bubble wrap down here. Do a nice, nice box. And we'll wrap her up here. Close enough. I like that. Stuff a little extra in there for good measure. Okay. Yep, that'll do. Uh, you want it right here in the middle, that way anything that runs nearby it isn't gonna get in, you know, damage the box and all. Let's head off to ship her off. Come on, Jen, let's go. Hey, buddy, you wanna go ship it off? You wanna go to the ship? You wanna go freight terminal? It's YBZ. Appreciate it, thank you.